What's up guys? It's Brady from the Airsoft Headquarters. Today on our video, Talon and I are going to be going over events and kind of prepping and getting everything ready and what to consider for going to events. So yeah, we've just got a couple of questions that we figured would be essential for beginner players that are looking to do their first or second milsim. Really have a lot of questions, but don't really know where to go to find the answers. So um, it's kind of going to be an airsoft event slash milsim how to basically. Yeah. Um, so the first big question is why go to these events? Well, it's going to be a higher level of um, interaction with airsoft. So you're going to be doing a lot of new experiences. You're going to be hands-on, unlike casual gameplay or stuff like that. Um, you're going to have to physically do a lot more moving. You're going to have to do a lot more tactics and you're going to have to incorporate a lot of more teamwork. So it's going to be more like real army or video game S type of stuff. Um, Hence the name Milsim. Which Milsim actually stands for military simulation. If you guys do not already know that. Right, with these events, you're going to have a lot more objective based gameplay rather than your normal walk on, which a lot of time will be say team deathmatch where you're just there shooting each other. This you're going to have, obviously you're still shooting each other and everything, but you generally have objectives of some sort that you've, added to it so yeah it takes a lot more of the tactics like talon talked about and teamwork and stuff like that so yeah it's just kind of a, a new different experience from your standard casual play it's kind of like ro uh, role play but you're part of some military branch whatever you really want to be um and usually there's a lot of backstory to these milsim events which kind of helps you put into the mindset of what your objective is and why you should accomplish these goals Airsoft Milsim is roleplay. Hate to break it to you, but it's roleplay. <laughs> so the second question is where to find events? A um, few different outlets you can go to to find events. Facebook can be a very good one. A lot of times there's groups, especially for your local communities for Airsoft, you can go to a lot of people will be posting, talking about events, um, especially for your smaller local events at your local fields. Generally, that's their outlet to go to. Um, you can also go to C3, being the Airsoft social media, just like with Facebook, um, and being more so just for Airsoft, you're going to have a lot of outlets there for people posting and talking about such events. Um, the other thing is if it's with bigger events, um, you know, held by some of these big event coordinators, their websites are going to have that information. So event websites such as Third Coast Airsoft, which is an acronym TCA, uh, you also have American Mail Sim, AMS, you also have Milsim West, MSW, uh, you have Centurion Arms, Desert, Desert Fox, um, Overwatch Tactics, and local fields such as Ballot Hack or Apocalypse Paintball are going to have some events. Um, even just check out the Facebook page for your local airsoft field and probably they're going to have some of the more casual, larger events with the larger body count with some more in-depth objectives, stuff like that. Um, this action might be a good time to plug Airsoft C3. Um, they have a feature on there where they have the U.S. map, and they have little dots as far as your local shops, fields, stuff like that. Um, and I know certain teams are going to host events in the area, so I'll put a screenshot of that event. Kind of show you that even for smaller stuff, they're mostly focused on the east and west coast. And the same thing holds true for the larger events as well. Not a whole lot's going to be happening here in the Midwest. Yeah, unfortunately. Um, next would be fields. Um, you know, you have your local fields versus some of these bigger events are going to be held kind of scattered at not actual playing fields, but more different facilities that get rented out. Um, this could be anything from factories. It could be military training facilities. It could be abandoned buildings. Um, there's just a whole slew of different places that you can find um, that you normally would not have access to. Um, very different from playing at your local fields. Um, local fields are built for airsoft or paintball, you know, um, so they're going to be a little bit better flow than some of those different facilities you go to. Um, a great example, a place that both town and I have played at was the Northridge Mall in Milwaukee. That would obviously be one of those rented facilities. Very unique, very cool type of facility. Not necessarily built for combat. Um, so 
usually with the local fields, you know, you've got something close for the most part within one, two hours. For a lot of people, sometimes closer. Um, for those rented facilities, you may have to travel for that. You know, you may be traveling six hours, it may be 15 hours, some people may be 24 hour type trip. So, you know, something where you want to get a group together, rent a vehicle or something like that, and, you know, stay at a hotel or camping. You know, you've got options there depending on where it is. Mm hmm. Um, so then the types of events that you can look for or kind of expect are going to be anywhere from a organized walk-on, casual mill sim, a higher tier mill sim, 48 hour plus mill sims, or uh, post-apocalyptic or themed events. Um, like the organized walk-on, casual mill sim, and the themed events are most likely going to happen at your local fields. Um, those are going to be hosted by you know, local players. Um, versus the, again, casual mill sim, the higher tier mill sim, or the 48 hour plus continuous gameplay of mill sims are going to be rented out facilities to do your games at. Uh, moving on, something to look at is your guns. Uh, what kind of gun you should take. Especially if you're new to this, you may have no idea. Honestly, our biggest recommendation for a gun to take to a big event is something that's going to be reliable, something that's not going to break down, you know, especially if it's uh, lower quality. Um, may not be the best idea because generally at these big events you're going to be doing a lot more shooting, you're going to be playing for longer periods of time versus your normal walk-ons, you know, you're talking 5 to 20 minute games with breaks in between and you're only playing, you know, 6, 8 hours for the most, most of the time. A lot of these bigger events, like your casual to your 48 hour plus, you know, you're playing 12 hours or longer in a day. So something that's reliable. Also performance, you want something that's going to perform well. Um, again, something low quality, you might not get the kind of performance because you're going to be playing in most of these cases against people who are more experienced and may have higher end, higher tier equipment. Um, so, you know, get something that's going to perform well. We're not talking, you know, go out and spend crazy amounts of money on the best stuff out there, but get some quality. Um, also, make sure that you've actually used it. Don't buy a gun and then go and use it the same week for a big event. You know, play with it a little bit. Make sure you know it's going to be reliable and have good performance. Mm -hmm. There's usually always a break-in period for airsoft rifles or pistols, so making sure that you have plenty of time to work in your rifle or your gear, for that matter, as well, to make sure that it will last. Um, in my personal case, starting out for Milsims, I had a, a Wii Tech 1911, which broke on me multiple times, as well as a APS branded rifle. None of those brands, or either of those brands, are known for being good. Um, at least, we don't think they are, by our standards. So, multiple times the pistol on the rifle has broken down on me mid-game usually got it repaired and ready for the next one and end up breaking down on me in the middle of the milsim again so that's a good way to ruin your event yeah those did not turn out too well for me so you don't need to spend crazy amounts of money but you want something that's going to last you yep um gear Let's talk about gear uh first thing is going to be your uniform or your clothing that you're going to be wearing um, this may vary depending, again, on your level of event you're going to. Um, your organized walk-ons and your casual milsim, you may have the opportunity to just wear regular casual civilian clothing, but you may not. Um, a lot of events you are going to be restricted to what you can wear. And a lot of times it is color-based. Um, a lot of times it's going to be camo. So, like for example here, this digital desert, this would be a tan-based camo. I was looking for that pen. <laughs> Um, so a lot of times, in most cases, not always, you usually have a tan base and a green base team, you know, tan versus green. It's pretty easy to distinguish tan and green from each other. So this would be an example of a tan base camo. This would be an example of a green base camo with this M81 Woodland. Um, Actually hold that up because yeah. this will be an example of two different types of at least top, like mm -hmm. folded open. Yeah. Because uh, this is going to be a combat tough where it's going to be thicker on the sleeves and it's going to be a polyester type of material for, you know, around your torso, which is going to help you breathe better if you are, you know, moving around a lot, especially if you're going to wear a plate carrier, stuff like that. Versus something like this, which is going to be, um, I don't know, what would you... Standard BDU. Yeah, standard BDU. It's basically a thin jacket, so it's a yeah. little bit baggier. 
at least for me. Um, Generally like a cotton or poly cotton ripstop versus your t-shirt material with the ripstop on the sleeves. This is a lot more breathable and more comfortable. Nothing wrong with these, but a little nicer. Something to note, I think Brady and I are on the same page with Multicam. Even though Multicam is a tan base and it is very, very popular of a camo pattern, once you put this in darker environments, it becomes green based very, very quickly and has been the cause for lots of friendly fire. Also, if you get it wet, if you're playing in the rain or I don't know, if you sweat a lot, this also seems to get pretty green when it gets wet. So this is Cool Guy. A lot of modern militaries are using Multicam or UCP for their base or OCP. I'm going to correct myself, OCP, OCP for their camo pattern. But for effective airsoft use, don't go with this. Go with something that's an obvious Something very obvious. Or an obvious green. Mm -hmm. Shut up. <clears throat> um, so then gear itself, like your vest, chest, rig, plate carrier type. Um, two main types that you're going to see are going to be your plate carriers and your chest rigs. Um, chest rigs are going to be lighter weight, they're going to cover less your body, and they're going to carry less gear. Um, versus a plate carrier, something like this is meant to carry a armored plate, it is going to cover up more of the body, is also going to have more real estate to carry more stuff. Um, they are heavier. That is something definitely to note, especially when playing, you know, somewhere where it's warm. You know, covering up your body more may not be the best option. Do you have chest rig? Actually, there is a chest rig right behind you. There's yeah. a good example of a chest rig. Um, basically, all of the gear on that, for the most part, is just carried on the front of it. And it doesn't take up quite as much area. In the back, it's very open. You just have the hydration carrier on here, which on some of these doesn't have that or is removable. And they're very lightweight. It is very nice if you're going to be moving a lot, especially if you don't need to carry a lot of gear, because honestly, don't carry too much. Just, you're going to weigh yourself down, slow yourself down, get tired, get too warm. Uh, if you can do a chest ring, do a chest ring. Otherwise, you've got your plate carriers like this, which, like I said, is bigger, carries more, but is definitely heavier. You know, if you're playing in the cold weather or cooler, this might be a good option versus a chest ring. But definite difference between them. Brady, what's your personal go-to for gear? LDX. I LDX mean, is a... I mean, plate carrier versus... LDX. <laughs> <laughs> um, personally, I tend to wear more chest rigs. Um, however, for mill sims, I tend to push more towards the plate carrier just because I can carry more and I'm going to be on field longer and need to carry more. Uh, for example, my plate carrier here, I've got six mags on the front and I have a backpack on the back where I can carry more, plus you know, grenades, utility stuff like more grenades, um, pistol pouch for your pistol mags. Um, med stuff, because a lot of these events will require some sort of equipment for healing. Um, chest rig that gets harder to do to carry all that. Now I do have certain chest rigs that can hold a lot, but it's still not as much as a plate carrier. So for example, an event I'm going to in March, um, Stonebreaker with TCA, I'm going to be wearing this. I'm going to be playing six, eight hours at a stretch without a break. I'm going to need to carry a lot more than most of my chest rigs can really afford. My personal go-to is almost always plate carrier. And it's very, very few times I personally go with a chest rig. Reason being? I just think they fit me better. They're more comfortable to me. Fair enough. Comfort's a big thing. If you're comfortable, you're going to be able to play longer. Um, last thing would be headgear. There's really two main options for this. A hat of some sort or a helmet. Always full seal eye protection. Well, yes, always, always, always. So this would be a helmet, obviously. This is going to offer you two things that a hat cannot do. This is gonna give you protection from hitting your head against stuff, especially if you're in tight quarters or let's say getting in and out of vehicles. Having a helmet is nice so you don't bash your head open. Um, the other thing is allowing you to mount stuff to it. For example, lights like these dead rags. Dead lights, um, infrared lights, visible lights, comms, like some headsets can be mounted directly to the helmet. Um, sometimes you can attach your eyewear, your face wear, so like mesh masks, your goggles can be attached directly to it. Or, you know, if 
you happen to be able to afford it, night vision. Whereas a hat, you're not really attaching anything to this. This is more just to cover up your head. Does help a little bit with getting shot, but isn't really going to do much else other than give you some shade if you have something. Um, you went with a boonie, it's a little bit better option for shade, but it is your other option, but it's not going to give you protection. Full face masks are acceptable, but it is going to kind of pull away from your immersion. Um, it also is just not built well to work in conjunction with a standard rifle. There's just too much material from the mask to properly aim down sights, so that is going to hinder your performance. Other types of masks that are unacceptable are going to be these types of masks because within the US you have to have full seal eye protection underneath this as well and this really by design is super super bulky and doesn't perform all that well yeah. um, so this we don't really suggest at all even for casual gameplay. Let's get into rolls. Um, for rolls you have with 90% of these event coordinators, you're gonna have Rifleman, Medic, Support, Marksman, Slash, GMR, or Sniper. These are the most standard of roles, and they're kind of the go-tos as far as how you're gonna set up your gear, as well as what type of guns you're gonna run. We're gonna hit on those later. So, the biggest thing is getting yourself prepared for your role and getting the gear you need for your role. If you're gonna be running a Rifleman class, don't have the gear set up or the gun that would be for a sniper platform or a sniper role. Um, with a rifleman role, it's always going to be a basic infantry loadout, so a basic M4 or AK, um, six magazines, basic light loadout, stuff like that. Light but sustainable. You don't want to go too light. Uh, medics are always going to have extra pouches on their gear. They're basically basically going to have the rifleman set up but they're going to have extra pouches and gear specifically for bandaging and getting the um, fake dead players back into the game, since there are rules on that and they do fluctuate based on the event. Um, your support gunners are going to have, more than likely, the full auto rifles, so your LMG, HMGs, yada yada yada, um, and they are going to have way different gear set up, and they're going to have more gear restrictions because of that specific type of role. Um, so do some research into that. The Marksman DMR are usually going to have way different types of gear as well, um, and they're going to be using different types of guns as well. So Generally, Marksman or DMR is going to have a semi-auto only rifle. And when I say that, I mean physically enabled to shoot full auto. Usually is a little bit higher FPS than your rifle. Um, in most cases, has to replicate a Marksman weapon, so not an M4 with a scope. We're talking something like an SR-25 or a Dragunov or something like that, generally a higher caliber weapon. Um, so not just, you know, don't take an M4 and throw a scope on and say you're a marksman because most cases events won't allow that. Yeah. And then sniper obviously is going to be a sniper rifle, bolt action rifle. And again, they're going to have way different types of gear set up. So the biggest thing that we suggest is don't wear this type of gear, which Brady and I have set up more for the rifleman or medic type of role, and be running around with a sniper rifle. Yeah. Because the gear does not support the rifle, and the rifle does not support the role of the assault. Um, yeah. So instead of this, I would run this. Run a regular assault rifle. And then the gear can always be changed. You don't have to go with a direct army or marine base setup for your gear. You can always change it depending on what you are comfortable with. So how I have my gear set up is not gonna be the same way that Brady has his gear set up, but both of our gear setups are going to be able to support the rifleman role. Mm -hmm. Yeah, make sure you're comfortable with your stuff, get used to your stuff. Just like with the gun, don't pick something out brand new and then immediately go to a game. Try it out a little bit, because if you're uncomfortable or unfamiliar with it, you're gonna have a harder time. Yeah. Mine's got all sorts of dings in it, and it looks pretty. Mine looks pretty when it's abused. That can be taken somewhere that I'm not going. I know! <laughs> so I think that covers it as far as rules. I mean, do you want to go over some 
uh, examples of the other classes' weapons. Yeah, I guess while we're doing that. All right, guys, so that's the end of part one for our Airsoft events question and answer. Um, stay tuned for part two. It's going to be coming out in a little bit. If you guys have any questions from part one, feel free to put them down in the comments section down below. Um, if you have any questions as well, and if you're close by, you can come by the store. Brady and myself are going to be in the store almost always. So other than that, you guys take care, have fun, be safe, and be healthy. Stay tuned. Bye.